Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, had everything going for it. A recognizable IP, a talented crew, and excellent casting. Despite this, its theatrical run has been underwhelming to say the least, not only earning far less than projected, but less even than the Garfield movie. So what went wrong? Why wasn't this the blockbuster hit to kick off both the Memorial Day weekend and the summer movie season as a whole? In contrast to my previous video, this has almost nothing to do with the technical aspects of directing, as even with this film, George Miller showcases his unique abilities in staging dramatic scenes and highlighting small details that bring his worlds to life. Unfortunately for Miller, who also co-wrote this movie, the problem comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of what his audience wants to see in a Mad Max film, which I boil down to five basic points. To get the obvious one out of the way, the first point of misunderstanding comes from which characters the audience focuses on. The central figure of George Miller's apocalypse is none other than Mad Max Rokitansky, who embodies the archetypal reluctant hero, the drifter, the loner, the man without a name, and despite his moniker, has been a proxy for the audience in these films, generally acting as the voice of sanity and reason amidst the fallen world. He acts for the most part out of self-preservation and reacts to the insanity of the wasteland in the same way that most of the audience would, and gives them a character they can easily see themselves in. Because Max has been the driving force of the franchise, it being named after him and all, his absence in Furiosa a Mad Max Saga is strongly felt. That doesn't mean there aren't other great characters for the audience to empathize and connect with, but a Mad Max film without its central hero, without Mad Max, and really without Mel Gibson's Mad Max, just feels empty. And unfortunately, Furiosa as a character just doesn't connect with audiences as strongly as Max did, and certainly not enough to carry her own film. Charlize Theron's Furiosa, introduced in the fourth film in the series, Mad Max Fury Road, was an excellent addition to the cast of characters, balancing out Max's survivalist nature with a self-sacrificing, caring sort of a nature and made for possibly the most interesting supporting character in this series. This is where the misunderstanding kind of takes place, as her strength as a supporting character was misunderstood as strength as a lead. Add to this a recasting, albeit a good one, of a side character in a prequel to a recasted sequel, and most fans of the franchise will just lose interest. The second point of misunderstanding comes from Furiosa's approach to one of the franchise's biggest draws, its vehicles. Perhaps the highlights of any Mad Max film are the incredible car chase and action sequences that feature the wackiest and most outlandish vehicles that can be imagined. What has always set them apart from other action films is both the scope and intelligent design behind the vehicles that both look over the top and otherworldly, as well as practical and lived in, like they were kind of cobbled together with whatever was lying around, which is essentially how they were always built for the films. Each vehicle is built with the characters in mind as an extension of their personalities. And this focus on intention and design led to the misunderstandings surrounding vehicles for Furiosa, which were simply underwhelming. The film's main villain, Dementis, sees himself as a sort of Roman emperor, and so leads a biker gang by driving around a chariot pulled by three bikes. It's the sort of thing that sounds good in theory, but on the screen, it underwhelms. Beyond this, he drives a six-wheeled monster truck, Furiosa drives the war rig from the previous films, and two additional smaller cars, and that essentially makes up the roster of the vehicles seen in the film. It falls far below the expectations of a Mad Max film, and being that the vehicles are crucial to the action set pieces, leads to very underwhelming chase scenes. The next point of misunderstanding surrounds the world building of the film. Much like the crazy vehicles on display in the films, one of the main draws of the Mad Max films is seeing George Miller's vision of the post-apocalyptic world. Each film in the franchise expanded that world and built upon it, showcasing new, unique locations while hinting at what else might lie in the wasteland. This was perhaps done best in Fury Road, that not only showcased the new settlement in a Morton Joe Citadel, but also hinted at several other strongholds of the wasteland with characters only briefly mentioning places like the Bullet Farm and Gastown. Miller's decisions of what to show and what not to show were crucial in that success of Fury Road, not only showing his audience more of his vision, but also holding some back, bringing an air of mystique to his world with what we don't get to see on the film. 
His mastery of world building in Fury Road seems to have been misinterpreted for Furiosa, which felt more like world deconstructing, as we retread the same exact ground as the previous film, showing the same spots of a Morton Joe Citadel yet again, as well as showing the two settlements mentioned in that previous film, Bullet Farm and Gastown. Furiosa also makes the point of saying that beyond these two settlements, there's nothing else, which after seeing them on screen, just makes the world of Mad Max feel smaller rather than bigger, deconstructing the world rather than building upon it. The next point of misunderstanding comes from the nature of the IP itself. Unlike most other franchises today that have almost come to rely on callbacks to previous entries and tying in larger narratives, the Mad Max films are much more akin to the spaghetti westerns like the Dollars Trilogy that all exist as individual films only loosely connected by a central character and a few winks and nods here and there to the audience. Furiosa's predecessor, Mad Max Fury Road, followed the same pattern as well, functioning as an individual story separate from the previous three, while giving a ton of Easter eggs for fans of the franchise, which were all well received and got audiences talking about everything from the fate of the gyro captain to theories like Tom Hardy's character not even being Max, but being a grown up version of the feral kid. This enthusiasm around Fury Road and its attention to detail seems to have been misunderstood and led Furiosa to basically function as one giant callback just to Fury Road, not only filling in way more backstory than necessary, even for mundane things like how Furiosa got her knife, but repeating shots from Fury Road frame for frame. Easter eggs and callbacks made for interesting talking points when it came to Fury Road, but didn't determine its success, and Furiosa's attempt to capitalize on that was a misreading of why audiences were excited about the film. The final point of misunderstanding that led to Furiosa's less than warm reception is regarding the story itself. While in pre-production for Fury Road, Charlize Theron was given an additional script outlining the backstory of her character, which helped enhance her performance in the film. This is undoubtedly a masterful technique that many others have used to the benefit of their films, and Theron's performance in Fury Road was no exception. However, an outline of the backstory of a side character does not necessarily make for a compelling film. Where the previous Mad Max films were all rooted in the hero's journey and took a straightforward approach to their story, keeping the action almost non-stop, which is what fans of the franchise want to see, Furiosa takes the approach of an epic, something much closer to The Odyssey and at a two and a half hour runtime feels even slower than it already is. Furiosa also feels much closer to the horror genre than action, with heavy emphasis on gory scenes and gross out gags, from crucifixions to body horror to an absolutely unforgivable scene that everyone involved should be ashamed of. This is frankly not what audiences want to see in their films. Action films, especially the Mad Max films, have always been about escapist fun. And Furiosa is simply not that. I got skills I can trade in. Sorry, the brothel's full.